Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel, Jaya Sri Javaji. Today, we will be continued reading from the book, Sachin Tendulkar, Playing It My Way, My Autobiography with Boria Majumdar. Part 29 Subsequently, each one got out without scoring. Of course, in cricket, a duck is associated with a batsman scoring zero and on the Australian television coverage, a duck is even shown accompanying a batsman back to the pavilion if he gets out without scoring. Ajit said to me I could have much duck as I wanted once the World Cup was over. Just before the tournament started, Anjali decided to go back to London, leaving me to focus solely on my cricket. In the second trimester of her pregnancy and with one and a half year old Sarah with her, it must have been immensely difficult for her to negotiate things on her own. While I missed her badly and desperately wanted to be with her to help out. There was little I could do but appreciate what she was doing for me and the family. It was in the middle of all this that I received the news of my father's passing. Ajit, who had gone back to India by then, called Anjali to tell her what had happened and asked her to break the news to me personally. Anjali in turn called two of my teammates, Robin Singh and Ajay Jadeja, and asked them to be outside my room as she drove back to the team hotel in Leicester very late at night on 18th May. The day before our second match of the tournament against Zimbabwe, she also called the hotel manager and asked him not to transfer any calls to my room. When I opened the door, at well past midnight and saw her standing with Ajay and Robin, I immediately sensed something serious had happened. Atul Ranade, one of my closest friends, was with me in my room and I asked Atul to go out as Anjali came in. I could not believe what she was saying. It was a cruel blow and not something I had expected at all. It left me numb for a few minutes. I could not say a thing. Father had always been there for me. My mind had stopped working and all I could do was hold Anjali and cry. I felt helpless and was unable to come to terms with the shock for a while. My first thought was to go back to India at the earliest opportunity to be with my mother and see my father one final time. Mark Mascaranhas, as always, had already made all the arrangements for the following morning and drove the two of us to Heathrow just before dawn. All through the journey, I kept thinking about my father, who had been in reasonable health when I had left India for the World Cup. In fact, I couldn't believe he was not alive and felt that if I went back to India, he would open his eyes again. He had undergone angioplasty and a few months earlier and had stayed with us so that Anjali could take care of him by the time I left for the World Cup. He seemed back to his normal self and had even started to climb three floors. The doctors had asked him to have a drink every evening and I made a point of coming home most evenings to share a drink with him. In my wildest dreams, I had never imagined that I would be sharing a drink with my father. But medical advice had forced me to do so. The thought that I would never see him again was just too much to digest. My brothers and friends had come to pick me up at Mumbai airport, but this was a very different homecoming from normal. When I got home, I could see that my mother had aged considerably in the past few days and was sitting facing the wall, she hardly said a word to anyone and was in a state of shock. I felt devastated to see my mother like that and what was more worrying was that she did not move from her position for close to two days. It became unbearable. When I came face to face with my grandmother, who had lost her son, she said to me that she wanted to spend a few quiet minutes with him and I immediately asked all who were present to leave us alone for a while 
I accompanied my grandmother to the room where my father's body was lying, then left her to mourn with her son in peace. I remember standing a good few yards away, giving her the space she needed. I couldn't sleep for many nights, having lost my biggest inspiration, and it was a deeply emotional moment for all of us when the watchman, postman, and all the other people he had helped during his life came over for his funeral. I put a gold coin with my face on it in his pocket before the cremation, so that I could always be there with him. Without my father, my life would never be the same again. A very difficult tournament. After spending four days in India, I returned to England to rejoin the team on the eve of the match against Kenya. That, it seemed to me, was what my father would have wanted me to do, and that's what prompted the decision to return to London to play the remaining World Cup matches. Mentally, however, I was not at my best throughout the tournament. I had to wear dark glasses during the practice sessions because at times I could not hold back my tears. Though I managed to score a hundred in the match against Kenya, which remains one of my most cherished centuries, one I dedicated to my father, my mind was not always on the game. The back injury which had not shown any signs of improvement, also continued to bother me throughout the rest of the World Cup, helping to make it one of the toughest tournaments I have played in. It wasn't India's best World Cup either, and we were knocked out in the Super 6 stage after winning a couple of memorable matches against Sri Lanka and England at the group stage. Against Sri Lanka at Taunton on 26th May 1999, Saurav and Rahul played two of the finest innings I have seen in a World Cup. Saurav was at his elegant best on his way to a majestic 183 and Rahul played beautifully for his 145. In our next match against England on 29th May, Saurav it again made a significant all-round contribution to give us a much-needed win and Rahul was consistent right through the tournament. At the Super 6 stage, our only consolation was another win against Pakistan. The match had assumed great significance against the backdrop of strained political relations between the two countries. The war in Kargil in Kashmir was on at the time. India won the highly charged encounter by 47 runs, with Venkatesh Prasad picking up a 5-wicket haul, an unexpected appointment. The back pain continued to bother me after the World Cup and in fact turned worse in the twin tournaments in Sri Lanka and Singapore in August to September 1999, at the end of which I decided to go to Australia to get my back examined. I had already resorted to acupuncture and acupressure and even had my tongue pricked by an expert in Singapore trying to identify the pressure points that might help in the recovery. They were the acts of an increasingly desperate man. Dr. Anand Joshi, one of the Indian's leading doctors and one who has always been there for me right through my career, traveled with me to Adelaide in September 1999 to meet a number of specialists. A series of checks were conducted and I eventually received four injections for the injury. I was glad I could not see the injections at the time because afterwards I realized I had never seen bigger needles in my life. I actually carried one bag to show my friends and family and nobody could believe the size of them. But they did the job and soon after my return to India, the back injury that had bothered me for 8 months was finally sorted. It was certainly a relief to be pain free. My termination was even greater because in August 1999. I had been appointed captain of India again despite having deep reservations about talk taking on the job for a second time. What happened was that Ajit Vadekar had come to my house to ask me if I was prepared to captain India again and I told him that I was reluctant to do so. The next I heard was that I had been appointed captain again ahead of a tri-series in Sri Lanka in August. It appears that Vadekar sir had come over to speak to me on behalf of the BCCI and it was after consultation 
with him that the selectors had decided to give me the responsibility despite my unwillingness once the appointment was made public it was difficult for me to turn it down i have never dug a challenge and i went on to accept the job determined to give it my best we were due to tour australia at the end of the year and i knew it was the toughest assignment in cricket at the time a new arrival all of this coincided with the birth of our second child when anjali and i were blessed with a baby boy on 27 september 1999 i decided to name him arjun and remember announcing my intention to anjali soon after i had seen my son for the first time she later mentioned to me that she had thought of a few other names herself but seeing my enthusiasm for arjun went ahead with my choice Once again I filmed the day and I cherished the recording of Arjun being brought out to me for the first time. Watching the children grow up is a fantastic feeling and I must say I miss them every time I was away from them. With Arjun it was particularly hard. He would reason my going away and would refuse to speak to me on the phone. For the first 6 years of his life Arjun never talked to me when I was on tour. In my desperation to hearing his voice I often requested Anjali to ask him to say hello but he would always refuse then on my return he would cling to me for the first 3 days trying to make up for lost time while Sara did not seem to reason my going in the same way as Arjun she did find it difficult on occasions to bond with me on my return Sara was just a few months old when I had to travel to Sri Lanka for a tour It was extremely hot in Colombo and I returned home with quite a tan at the end of the assignment. I had turned really dark and she didn't recognize me. She thought someone else had walked in and she refused to go near me for the first few minutes. When I had my kids at the turn of the century, technology was not as advanced as now and there was no option to use Skype or FaceTime. Had the technology been available, I'm sure I would have asked Anjali to bring Sara and Arjun in front of the webcam so that I could at least see my kids when I was off in some other part of the world. It would have meant not missing out on so many of the changes they went through. New Zealand in India October to November 1999. After a couple of weeks at home following Arjun's birth, I was back on the field at Mohali on 10th October captaining India against New Zealand in the first of 3 tests. Just like the first time the start to my captaincy was not too bad as we beat New Zealand in the series though we made it hard for ourselves in the very first innings at Mohali when we were bowled out for 83 with Dion Nash taking 6 wickets it was just one of those days when nothing worked and we collapsed for one of our lowest ever scores on home soil it seemed as if the ghost of barbaros was back to haunt me This time however our bowlers did a good job restricting the kiwis to 215 and bat- we batted with a lot more discipline in the second innings we scored five not five losing just three wickets with both rahul and me scoring hundreds and the game ended in a draw the second innings however was not without incident chris kanes the new zealand all-rounder bowled a spell of excellent reverse swing part of the problem for rahul and me was that he concealed the shiny side of the ball so well that there was no way for the batsman to work out which way the ball would swing that's when i came up with a plan i suggested to rahul that while it was impossible for the striker it was not so difficult for the non striker to work it out as he was far closer to kane's it was decided that while standing at the non striker's end i would spot the shiny stay side and if it was on the outside of the ball i would hold my bat in my left hand to indicate to rahul that the ball would swing away from him if the shiny side was on the inside i would hold my bat in my right hand to indicate that the ball would be coming into him and if i was not able to figure out which way the ball would swing i would hold my bat in the middle the plan worked surprisingly well and soon we were able to attack canes who ended up going for 76 runs in his 24 overs without picking up a wicket it took a while for canes to work out what we were doing to catch us unawares 
he decided to bowl a cross same delivery so i held my bat in the middle to indicate the rahul that i didn't know which way the ball would swing okay all let's end up for today we shall continue to start reading the chapters of the book in the next video until then stay tuned thank you if you like the video please like share and subscribe